The fact that foreigners are fighting for Ukraine is no secret at all. But in Russian media, there is a lot of talk regarding NATO mercenaries taking an active role in combat. Remember, recently in Bakhmut, we saw Colonel Melbourne and American volunteers as part of their Mozart PMC. And on the southern outskirts of Bakhmut, the Russians claimed that a unit of Georgian mercenaries was surrounded. And shortly after, reports appeared confirming that six Georgians had been KIA in these firefights. According to this fighter from Bars 13, 90% of the troops opposing them in late October consisted of mercenaries, most of which were Poles, but beside them, there was an amazing combination of Anglo Saxons. Russian media went as far as to claim that foreign nationals nationals in the Ukrainian forces active on the Zaporozhye front could exceed 50% of the total manpower. The best I could find on the Zaporozhye front was one group confirmed of 20 foreign fighters. Unless the entire Zaporozhye front is manned by 40 men, what are they talking about? But to me, the most shocking was when Russian sources reported that 1,200 Polish soldiers had been KIA in Ukraine. To be honest, I won't believe it until I see some winged hussars charging down Russian tanks. Hold on, that seems like a strangely familiar concept. Okay, cut, never mind. How about a winged tank charge? It goes even further. Some Russian sources are convinced that soldiers of fortune from Romania, Poland, and the Baltic countries lost 31,000 KIA in Ukraine. Ah, silly Russians. Things simply got lost in translation. I think they meant 31,000 Ukrainian weapons got lost in Romania. These are high quality weapons smuggled from Ukraine into Romania and then abroad. Demand, they say, is absolutely huge. Seriously, if 31,000 Eastern Europeans had been KIA in Ukraine, why is nobody talking about it? This number is huge, so question is, fact or cap? Can it be both true and false? At the same time, this is what you'll discover in this video. Welcome to History Legends and here are the latest news of the Russo-Ukrainian War. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And as you know, some of my videos have been targeted with limited or no ads. So make sure to check out my Patreon or PayPal to keep the show running. So thank you to all of you and welcome to the headquarters. The International Legion. When Russian troops entered Ukraine, reportedly 20,000 men answered the call of the International Legion to defend the country. In the West, we call them foreign volunteers, but for the Russians, there's no distinction. For the Russians, any foreigner fighting for Ukraine is a NATO mercenary. British volunteer? NATO mercenary. South Korean? NATO mercenary. Belarusian? And these Chechens fighting for Ukraine? Dirty traitors. However, truth be told, 10 months into the war, very few foreign volunteers remain in Ukraine. And it's not because they suffered heavy casualties. My friend Nick Laidlaw from Battles and Beers went to Ukraine to interview some soldiers. And at my request, he talked to some foreign fighters. This foreign volunteer said, There just aren't that many of us anymore. Lots of Westerners left because they expected the Ukrainian military to have the same standing operating procedures as in their country. Turns out the Ukrainian army is still in Cold War Soviet-style warfare. One example he mentions is a crushing bureaucracy. You need to ask for permission to get a permission in order to be permitted to ask for permission. As you can see, initiative is not encouraged. This is not the US Marine Corps where a single squad can run itself. The one interviewed adds that, in reality, many foreign volunteers got scared. They expected Afghanistan, they got Stalingrad instead. He says that lots of Ukraine commanders refuse to seize an opportunity because they're afraid of responsibility if something should go wrong and would rather wait for orders from higher ups. 
in order for them to shift the responsibility to someone else. He says that it takes days to get a mission approved. And when it's time to go into combat, it's always the same Soviet mentality. They tell you, the enemy is here, figure it out. Don't come back without results. He adds, the worst is when they go on joint operations with Ukrainian forces. It's always a clusterfuck. So now his team works autonomously. Surgical operations planned and executed by themselves. And what he says is very similar to what another foreign fighter told me in May and June. And at the end, he says the rough ratio is 1,000 Ukrainian soldiers for one foreign national. So let's say there are 500,000 Ukrainian soldiers. We're talking about 500 foreign fighters. Not really the huge NATO mercenary army that Russia keeps mentioning. For example, here during the Ukrainian offensive on Liman, we can see some American volunteers hiding from Russian aircraft. And here a group of English-speaking volunteers fighting house-to-house -house urban combat in the city of Bahmut. However, as you can see, we're talking about small squads, a platoon at most, which confirms the data we have regarding the International Legion. But if there's so few, how come the Russians in their reports keep mentioning that they eliminated groups of 50 to 100 foreign mercenaries? Officially, out of 20,000, 105 foreign volunteers have been KIA in Ukraine. Nevertheless, the lines become blurry since there are foreign units not included in the International Legion. According to NBC News, on the 31st of October, US military inspectors went to Ukraine to track weapons and equipment, meaning they're also among the first US military personnel to officially enter Ukraine. How many? Don't know! And lately, on the 14th of December, the Times revealed that 350 Royal Marines from 45 Commando were conducting special operations in Ukraine and helping to train Ukrainian armed forces. Perhaps this confirms the presence of Captain Price among Ukrainian soldiers. But all this raises the question, are there more such NATO units in Ukraine? And how many are there? Perhaps there's a lot we don't know about and that the Russians were right when they said they were facing NATO mercenaries. The Polish Legion. As we said, apart from the International Legion, there seem to be autonomous Polish units. Here on the Twitter account Visgrad, they said, a number of soldiers from the Polish Legion were wounded today after heavy Russian shelling. There's also a Belarusian Legion, a Georgian one, even a Russian Legion with a white and blue flag. However, a Legion is basically equal to a buffed up squad. So we don't really know how many men would be included in this Polish Legion. Here, this Russian article about the Ukrainian offensive in Kharkiv, a third of the AFU are mercenaries. According to intelligence data, in the latest counterattacks of the armed forces of Ukraine, their core was stopped by citizens of NATO countries by 30%. And as ultimate proof, they go on to show this picture that says foreign instructors and mercenaries actively help the armed forces of Ukraine. Really? Because I highly doubt it. In reality, this is a Canadian soldier. Canadian instructors were only deployed in Britain in order to train Ukrainian military personnel. That's it. They're not taking active part in the fighting in Ukraine. To be honest, I think the Russians were just very salty that they were defeated by Ukrainian troops. They couldn't say the real reason why they lost. So they cope by saying that 30% of Ukrainian troops they faced were NATO mercenaries. Russia suffered major setbacks in September and October for one simple reason. Before entering Ukraine, we know that Russian soldiers signed a six-month deployment contract. They thought the entire thing would last a week, but they took a free ride straight into hell instead. These soldiers saw a lot and suffered greatly, and especially those deployed in Kharkiv. It is believed that 30 to 50,000 Russian soldiers did not renew their contracts. Now let's count February plus six months. August. And what happened on the 25th of August? Ukraine launched its offensive in Kherson and shortly after in Kharkiv Oblast against positions barely manned by Russian troops, apart from Luhansk militiamen and National Guard units. Meaning Ukrainians knew exactly the situation of the Russian army and knew exactly what they were doing. This also explains why the Russian offensive suddenly stopped in the summer, right after their victory in Lysychansk in early July. It is possible that many Russian troops knew that their contracts would end within a month and simply stopped advancing. Who wants to die a month before escaping this nightmare? 
and the Russian command was very naive. They let all this happen and it bit them in the bunda really hard. So of course, instead of admitting that a third of the Russian army escaped from Ukraine, Russia preferred to say that a third of their opponents were NATO mercenaries. On the 23rd of May, Russian reports mentioned the arrival of two Polish battalions with armored vehicles in Pavlorad. Supposedly, they're fighting in Ukrainian uniform. There are so many reports of Polish soldiers fighting in Ukraine that 10 months into the fighting, it was reported that 1,200 of them were KIA and mainly Polish soldiers belonging to the 16th Mechanized Division. All this information is extremely precise and this information was shared from one telegram group to another. But some people started to question the authenticity of these claims. I did my own research and found this Polish article. It says an American style cemetery is being built near Alstyn. Further into the article it says, the director of the municipal cemeteries department in Alstyn says that 1721 graves are being built in a separate space and if the idea is accepted there will be more. And that's all the information available. Now what happened is that some guy interpreted this article by assuming that since it's an American style cemetery it must be for soldiers and since they're adding 1700 tombs it must be that 1700 Polish soldiers died in Ukraine. All this comes from his interpretation of an article and you know what's the worst thing? The fact that he mentions the 16th mechanized division. I'll let you guess what do you think happened? Okay, let's check on the map where Alstyn is located on the map. Now let's check what division is deployed in the sector. That's right, the 16th Mechanized Division. This entire story is pure speculation. To me, if that was true, this topic would have been extremely controversial in Poland. Added to the fact that being a mercenary in Poland is illegal and punishable by up to five years in prison. So if that many Polish soldiers were in fact fighting in Ukraine, you can imagine the PR disaster for the Polish government. And all the story would have been case closed if it wasn't for this article. The Ministry of National Defense does not want to punish Poles fighting in Ukraine where they explained that dozens of Polish military personnel got permission to fight in Ukraine and won't get into trouble for doing that. But still, we're talking about dozens of people and not hundreds and thousands. And that's the problem. At the same time, on the 25th of June, Russia claims they launched a missile strike on the barrack which housed 80 Polish mercenaries. And as of now, Russia claims the death of hundreds, if not thousands of foreign mercenaries. Foreign mercenaries. And a couple weeks later, a Luhansk official said that Polish and Romanian mercenaries stationed in the Liman area refused to go into battle after a number of failed attacks. Then a group of Ukrainian nationalists meant to stop troops from retreating showed up to re-establish order. Both groups got into a firefight which resulted in 30 to 50 Ukrainian soldiers KIA. To be honest, this last report is very hard to believe. There's not a single trace of it and I don't think that such an event ever happened. Now the problem with these rumors is that there's always some seed of truth. Ukraine does in fact have some sort of military police units behind their own lines. Like NKVD anti-retreat units. And I didn't believe it myself until I saw this video of a Ukrainian soldier. Всім доброго дня. А ви знали, що у нас є загратотряди? Да, да. Сьогодні я в цьому переконався. Є в кількості 450 чоловік у глибокому тилу, які придумляють закони. Overall Polish soldiers are always mentioned by the Russians, yet they're nowhere to be found. There's no video of them, nothing. Here's some footage during a battle in Kherson. We see an armored column of Ukrainian paratroopers that got ambushed. The Russians claim that out of 16 enemy KIA, only two had Ukrainian documents. The remaining 14 were Polish citizens. Yet, we never saw those Polish documents. The same way we never saw the reports on who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. At this point, it just probably blew itself up. We know that these past month, thousands of Ukrainian soldiers have been trained in Britain. And many of them took part in Ukraine's set of offensives. Many other Ukrainians were trained across Europe, mainly France and Czech Republic. So one possibility is that those Ukrainian soldiers had British or foreign instructors in battle or at the rear coordinating this entire thing, which could explain radio communications in English and other foreign languages. We could use the same logic regarding 
Polish instructors. Perhaps when the Russians keep mentioning Polish battalions, it was in fact Polish trained battalions. However, having all these foreign instructors in Ukraine would still be very risky considering the threat of Russian missile strikes. Hence why all training is now done on EU territory away from hostile fire. The answer might lie in this next clip from Bakhmut, which is a few weeks old. These Ukrainian soldiers claim that two or three times a week there come Poles on 155mm crab self-propelled guns. They fire at the Russians and then leave, each time exposing the position of this Ukraine platoon for enemy counter-battery fire, which caused this Ukraine squad to lose 8 out of 20 men. It could be that they simply say pause because these self-propelled guns come from Poland, but the fact that they use some slur to refer to them could confirm that these guys are actually Polish. A secret army. Training infantrymen is rather easy, meaning you can teach the basic skills important for combat in a couple weeks. So it's hard to believe that NATO infantrymen would make up 30% of the armed forces of Ukraine. So it's hard to believe that NATO infantrymen would compose 30% of Ukrainian assault units. And let's be honest, Ukraine has enough manpower. But the same cannot be said about technicians and weapon specialists that require many months of expertise. The reports that mention foreign instructors training Ukrainians on how to use UAVs and Krapiva control systems. The same could be said about the crews of complex self-propelled guns. In this article, we know that 18 crabs were donated for sure, and that by October 2022, Poland had already donated 3 battalions worth of crabs, 54 pieces with support vehicles. Each crab has a crew of 5, so theoretically we could be talking about 250 ex-Polish military personnel perhaps contractors, fighting in Ukraine but since they're artillery they're fighting rather far from the front. But even then that doesn't exclude the risk of casualties. For example, here we can see a 105mm crab that was destroyed near Dniepro. Some even believe that the HIMARS are actually manned by British and American contractors, paid a premium to go to Ukraine. At the same time, why would all this be necessary since the Pentagon said it would take some three weeks to train Ukrainian teams to operate the HIMARS and another two weeks to teach them maintenance? I don't know, is this realistic or is it BS? And as for the PZH2000, the Bundeswehr said that in 40 days of training, Ukrainians got acquainted with this complex system. But acquainted is not the same as combat ready to face Russian artillery. At the same time, these Ukrainians training on Polish crabs don't start with zero knowledge. Most of them are actually experienced crews of 2S19 Msta self-propelled guns. They simply had to work on top of already existing skills, like infantrymen learning how to use a new assault rifle. And same story for the Ukrainian crews of the German PZH-2000. I don't see why Polish or foreign contractors would be necessary. If Ukrainian crews can be trained on more modern equipment in a couple weeks. Раніше стріляли в 2019. Різниця в тому, що вона дана система є дуже легкою в навчанні. Тобто все електроніка. Кнопочку нажав, навелася. Ві установки, кнопочку нажав, все. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, make sure to check out my Patreon or PayPal. The links are in the description below.